Playhouse. If anyone had told me when I left the States I'd fall for an English gal, I'd have told them they was nuts. But that was before I met Joan. Joan was English. She talked different from us folks. But what she had to say amounted to the same thing. I learned to love that gal. Yes, sir, I wouldn't take a million bucks for Joan. Did I say a million? Say, I love that girl more than life itself. This is the story of two lives in war-torn England. The tale of love between Buster Menton, navigator with the American Air Force, and Joan Warwick, an English girl. Author's Playhouse presents McKinley Cantor's inspiring story, Forever Walking Free. That was fun, eh, fellas? Uh-huh. Hey, I hate to go back to the base. You know, those English gals are all right. Yep. After you catch on to the nutty way they talk English, they're solid. <laughs> Wait until my mother gets a letter about this. She'll be telling everybody in Quincy, Illinois, that I went to a dance at Lady Inchcliffe. Say, you know, it's getting late. We'll have to hop a bus. Hey, Richardson, the bus stops over here. Uh, hiya, Menton. Richie. Ah, too bad they wouldn't let us escort some of those babies home, huh? That's against the rules, I guess. <laughs> oh, what a layout. Say, did you see that crystal chandelier? You know, I'd have felt a little easier if old Lord Sidewhiskers didn't keep frowning down at me. <laughs> Listen, Metton, he's been dead a hundred years, at least. Yeah, but those pictures gave me the creeps. <laughs> Next furlough, we'll head back for Lady Inchcliffe again. How about... You bet. Hey, duck that cigarette, Richardson. Never mind my cigarette. Scram for cover. These will be robots. We'll meet back at the bus stop if we get separated. Okay. Now take cover, you saps, and hurry. From the shelter there, did you there? There, miss! Better take cover! Thank you, I'm all right. Oh, there goes my stocking. Bust those jetties with their rocket bombs. I have to buy those off for you to take time. There was a robot, and I saw one. Never mind, I won't be frightened. You don't have to worry until the motor stops. Oh! Oh, there goes my other stocking. Hey, sister, what gives? Oh, I'm all right, thank you. Here, let me help you out. Sorry. Quite a show, eh, sister? <laughs> What'll those Nazis think of next? Oh, I think it's all clear, miss. You can get along now. Oh, thank you. What are you, RAF? Heck no. Just good old USA. <sighs> should have known. Why? I mean, how come you should have known I was an American? It's dark in here. Well, naturally, your voice. Oh, yeah? Hey, bet you can't tell what part of the states I'm from. <sighs> Let me see now. You're not... You're not from below the Mason-Dixon line, are you? <laughs> no, not me. Hey, where'd you ever pick that up? He's laughing now, but probably soon he'll want to begin pouring, the way it always ends. They're nice chaps, Americans, but they invariably begin pouring. And then you have to get angry, and then they say, well, nuts to you, babe, and sock for a while. And then they escort you home, usually, like perfect gentlemen, and talk about other things, but they don't come back again. Hey, what's the matter? You're dreaming? I said, where'd you ever pick that up? Oh, well, you're not the first American I've met. Touche. <laughs> Cigarette? Oh, thank you. We're grateful to you, you know. You boys have been giving Berlin what for. Well, well. A blonde. What's it? Oh, nothing. Here's a light. Oh, thank you. Oh, I like American cigarettes ever so well. well. I like you ever so well. I saw you tonight. Dancing at Lady Inchcliffe. You were so popular, I never got a chance to get near you. <laughs> I've been going there for a long time, helping out, so the boys all know me. It's not that I'm so popular. Well, you're modest, too, as well as beautiful. <sighs> you American boys. You try so to be funny. Why? What's so funny about that? Why, an English boy would have had to know you for years before he would tell you that you're... you're beautiful. <laughs> well, Americans get down to business. <laughs> you know what's your name, honey? Joan. Joan Warwick. What's yours? Menton. Lieutenant J.A. Menton. Buster to you. 
Buster. I say that's your, what do you call it, a nickname, isn't it? Yeah, everybody always called me that back home. But you know how it is in the Army. In the Air Forces, everybody calls you by your last name. They just say Smith, or Johnson, Klingberger, Riley, Levinsky, or whatever it is. Oh. I hope Jerry doesn't send those rockets over again tonight. We haven't had any for weeks. Thought they'd all been cleared out. Hey, look here. Come down to the bus stop with me. I have to meet two friends there, and then we'll all take you home. Holy mackerel, I can't. Look at the time. Well, it's quite all right. Really, it is. My bus comes right along here. And I have to make one, too, or I'll be late back to the field. And that, my love, is serious business. <laughs> hey, look. May I see you again next leave? When will that be? Oh, perhaps next Tuesday. Perhaps the one after. I'll come to the lady what's-her-names and dance with you. And then we'll go someplace after, huh? What do you say? Well, we're not allowed to let the chaps take us home. Yeah, but suppose I don't get there in time. I won't be able to see you at all. Hey, look, if I don't make it until late, and you were standing here waiting for your bus, and I came along, well, Lady Hoosers couldn't object to that. <laughs> oh, you Americans. <laughs> hey, what do you say, huh? We'll try to get to the dance. But if we don't... <laughs> then I'll see you Tuesday a week, right this very spot. You know, I never thought I'd fall for an English girl. But you know, you're wonderful. <laughs> and you're ever so fun. Oh, here's my bus. So long, baby. I'll be looking forward to our date. And so shall I. So long, Joan. Goodbye. Buster. A diggity, a diggity dog. <laughs> This will be one of the most concentrated air attacks ever delivered by our branch of the Air Force. As you men know, the Red Army is closing in on Berlin. In fact, it's occupied a large portion of the city. Your job is to deliver your bomb loads on the narrow escape corridor leading out of the capital. This is no routine hop. You've already been briefed on the weather, terrain, and so forth. Now, any questions? Yes, Colonel. Lieutenant Minton? How about enemy aircraft, sir? According to reconnaissance, there may not be a single enemy aircraft in the sky. Our allies have captured the Tempelhof airfields, and the other major bases have been put out of action. Your troubles will come from intense anti-aircraft fire. The Germans have concentrated hundreds of mobile guns in the escape corridor. Some of our thunderbolts have come back with more different sized holes in them than you can shake a stick at. As you know, the German flak gunner knows his stuff. I want to remind you again that you've been provided with flak suits and helmets. I uh, don't want to find you using them to rest your feet on. Lieutenant Andrews, will you check flak suits? Yes, sir. Very well. Before we wind up this briefing, I want to tell you that yesterday the RAF dropped six-ton earthquake bombs on remaining e-boat shelters. If we can deliver a knockout blow at the escape routes today, it's bound to have a tremendous psychological effect. Lieutenant Reese? Yes, sir. Lieutenant Reese, you ought to head a group whose objective will be the robot bomb sites. Uh, don't look so sad. There are other jobs besides knocking out Schickel Group at the escape room. <laughs> yes, sir, but... I know how you feel. But you'll have your chance later. Now, all the known installations are illustrated right here on the board. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Minton? Yes, sir. Minton, since this is your last mission before you go up for a rest, as you know, don't let yourself think about it too much. If you feel jittery about it, we can arrange to keep you here. But I thought you'd like to be in on this big show. I'll go. It's up to you, and no one will think anything of it if you don't go up. I wouldn't miss it, sir. Now, these robot bomb sites are tricky. Huge concrete constructions. The woods around them are completely surrounded by bomb craters. What about opportunity targets, sir? On your way to rendezvous, if you get a chance to intercept any of this pilotless aircraft, you may do so. But your main objective will be the robot bomb sites. Any questions? No? Then let's go, boys. <laughs> Pilot to navigator. Menton, everything okay back there? Right on a beam. 
I think the colonel thinks he we got special cargo today, so he gave us an easy job. Special cargo? Sure. You. Me? Yeah, it's your last mission before you're off for a little fun with the English gals, and so he gave us an easy target. Hey, I'm not off for some fun with any English gals. I've got a date with a very special one, if I make it. But I've never been so scared before. That's so? You've been holding out. Everyone feels that way on his last mission. You'll make it, now don't worry. Target's ahead. Better warn Richardson. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to circle left over those woods, line up the target, get the plane humping fast, then Richardson can lay his eggs. Roger. Hey, Richardson, you old pickle squeezer, are you listening? Yep, shoot. All right, I'm going to dive in through the cloud cover. As soon as we break through and you get lined up, let them go. Okay, Mama Reese. Here we go for the dive. There's the target dead ahead. There they go. Let's go. Hey, how soon do we scram out of here? Look at that flash. Now get her out, brother. Just give me time. Richardson, uh, come up here. Yeah, there won't be time unless we... Uh, uh, What's that? Uh, Menton. Menton. What's wrong? Don't he answer? Hey, Menton. Menton. Richardson, get back there and see what's the matter with him. The best darn navigator we've got. If they've done anything to him... Mike, find out. Don't just stand there talking to yourself. What's the... Hey, look at that hole in the plane. Oh, where'd they get this, kid? Stop it. Boy, here, let me get it. Don't touch Don't. Oh, ain't it the luck, though? Those Jerry's. You'd think they knew it was your last mission. You'd think they knew you had a rest coming. I'll get my rest. Oh, sure. Sure you will. And then you'll be all right again. Buster. How did you know I was called Buster? Well, I, I never said nothing, but I saw it in the hometown paper you had. You know, it sounds... Good to have someone call me Buster. No kidding? Well, listen, I'll be back in a minute, pal. Richardson, how is he? Eh, not too good. He'll be off ops for a good long while. They got him in the stomach. You mean he's dead? No, but he's in a bad way. I don't think he'll last back to the base. Well, Richardson, stay there with him, will you? See what you can do. Uh, you'll be all right up here? Oh, sure. There's not a thing in sight. It ought to be clear sailing from here on in. Here, uh, take this first aid kit. Okay. I'll do what I can. I'll keep in touch with you on the intercom. Reezy? He's unconscious. 400 miles an hour this thing goes. I wish it did 800. So do I. But I think it's too late, Reese. I think it's too late. Hey, you miss. Run to the shelter. Don't stand out there in the open with those blocks of robots falling every which way. I'm waiting for someone at this bus stop. I'm all right, Miss Joy. Well, go ahead. Be a fool if you want to. You don't need to be frightened until you hear the motor stop. It won't pull as long as they're going. Here it comes. The motor is stopped. Duck. Oh, God, it's coming right at me. Hey, sister. What gives? Oh. Oh, you scared me. Oh, it's Buster. I didn't see you come. Which way Sorry did... I couldn't get here in time for the dance. <laughs> we seem destined to meet in the middle of raids. I was just thinking if you didn't come soon, I was going to take the next bus. I thought you must have forgotten all about it. No. Uh -uh. You got your leave then? Well, not exactly. You can say that I'm off ops at least. What does that mean, off ops? Off operations. Not flying missions. Not now. Well, how many missions have you done? <laughs> umpty nine. After the umpty ninth, they let you have a rest. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to ask you before that time. What do you do? Are you a pilot, Buster? No, I'm a navigator. Hey, you know, it's nice to have someone call me Buster. I haven't heard anyone call me Buster for a long time. Okay, Buster. Where do you come from? Quincy, Illinois. Hey, look, you in a hurry? I mean, can't we go somewhere? You don't have to go straight home, I hope. <laughs> Where could we go? But look, 
How about our stopping and maybe having something to eat and drink? <laughs> I can see you don't know very much about London. Oh, I've been here loads of times. <laughs> I say, then you should know that it's past closing. All the pubs were closed two hours ago. The supper clubs can't serve drinks after 11. <laughs> Sister, I know your town better than you. Then you'd know a place? I'll say. It's a swell place. It's run just for folks like us. Oh, why, that's regular black market. I mean... Oh, no, it isn't. It... <laughs> well, look, I don't care what you call it. But they're still open. They're open all night. I see. Is it far? Over here in Stokemore Place. The Blue Polly, they call it. The Blue Polly? I think I've heard of it. Come on, Joan. Let's go. You'll like it. I promise. <laughs> hey, go easy. Don't hurry so I... I say, go easy. I shan't have shoes to wear if I cut these pumps. Uh, you'll be all right. Just around this corner is Blackbush Square. That's a funny name. <laughs> yes, isn't it? Oh, look, isn't that terrible? Flats, remember? You should if you know this section so well. That big block of flats right there, and the whole corner's gone. Oh, a lot of people must have been killed. Yeah, I know. Folks do get killed in a war. But really, don't you think we ought to help? Okay. But no one seems to even look at us. Hey, you. Need a hand, buddy? They certainly act strange. As though they can't see us. Yeah. Even for English guys, they're plenty reserved. But look at this poor chap in the dressing gown. And bareheaded, coming towards us. Why, he's dazed looking. I was inside in that flat second story. I was blown up. Anything we can do for you, mister? Oh, sorry, not a thing. I'm waiting around for a while. That's all, thank you. Waiting around for a while. Oh, poor fellow. A bit balmy, maybe. Yeah, flack happy, I guess. That's what they call it. Well, come on. They don't seem to need us. Here's Stokemore Place over across. Oh, yes. How wonderful. <laughs> hey, your enthusiasm calls for a kiss. Oh, come now, really. You're a nice chap, you know, but... Okay, okay. Come along. I say, have you plenty of money? I mean, it might be frightfully expensive. Don't you worry your little head. Oh, Buster boy. Well, I'd never seen the like, really. And I thought Stokemore Place was practically all bombed out. Ever see anything like that? Well, they're lined up three deep in front of the bar. But... Hey, they... Aren't making any noise. Why, oh, in such a bar. Why, I haven't seen the like of it in years. Not since early in the war. Yeah, but it's so quiet. There are lots of people. But the place sounds empty. Lots of RAFs at the table. Yeah, not many Americans. <sighs> oh, Buster, I don't care how quiet everyone is. All I know is that it's fun being with you. Hey, there's a waiter. Hi. Table against the wall, eh? One of those little ones, please. Buster, I think I see a mink coat. An honest to John mink coat. Now you look fine yourself. <laughs> oh, no. No, I don't. One of my stockings has a ladder in it. Ah, it's so crowded, who'll see it? And who cares? I don't. Y you like it, John? Oh, it's heaven. I didn't know there was a place like this anymore in all London. I'm glad you like it. Remember? I prophesied you would. <laughs> right, oh. And won't you call that waiter back? I'm famished. Your menu, please. Thank you. Why, Buster, no canned meat. Not an ounce of the stuff listed. Jam and salad and cold sliced ham and shrimps. Actually, a shrimp salad in season. They'd have oysters, too, now, wouldn't they? Oh, absolutely. But I wouldn't eat them on a bed. <laughs> I thought all Americans loved oysters. Not me. I'm from the Middle West. We don't have them out there. <laughs> but one of the very next meals I have is going to be sweet corn. Oh, but you can't get any here, can you? No, not here. But I'll get roasting ears pretty soon. Don't worry about that. Where? At your base? I see. Where are you stationed? Brookwood. Yeah, that's it. Brookwood. <laughs> Funny. I couldn't think of its name for a moment. I guess I shouldn't have asked that, should I? Slip of the lip may sink a ship. Ever hear of my place? Oh, yes. Brookwood. I must have known someone stationed there before. It's down south, in Surrey, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Lots of Air Force fellows are down there. RAFs, too. Not only British RAFs, we've got all kinds. Canadians and Australians. 
Some pulls and checks, too. Now, now, mustn't talk about your base. <laughs> well, let's talk about you, Joan. Where do you work? MOI. What's that? A British Ministry of Information. I'm on the telephones. Switchboard, you know. You sorry you met me? Oh, not a bit of it. I like you. I love you. Oh, Buster, you shouldn't say things like that, now should you? Why not? Because it's... I do love you, Joan. I've been looking for you, I guess. Where? All over the Midwest and all over Britain. I've walked around in blackout and daylight. And I've never found anyone like you. Anywhere. What do you like especially about me? I, I'd like to hear you tell me. Well, first it was the way you came toward me. There in that alley. And then your voice. And you've got a kind of funny little cute way. Your voice is sort of warm, and I guess I could talk to you without much trouble. You could? Mm hmm And I like the way you walk. Oh, no, Buster. On the way to this table, I walked behind you, and I liked everything about you. That coat is sort of worn, but I liked the way that it hung, and, well, the way it sort of swung when you walked. Oh, Buster. I mean it. Every word. Oh, no. Oh, here comes our food. Ham, Buster. Honestly, I wouldn't have believed it. But look, no one says anything, but they're smiling at us. With us. Come on, let's eat. Buster, you said that the Blue Polly was open practically all night. Absolutely. Well, let's actually stay all night, shall we? And eat and be merry? Okay for me, baby. It's close to dawn, Buster. Yeah. Not a soul around. Oh, it seems like ages since I heard the all clear. <laughs> Her feet sound funny. The streets are so quiet. Somebody's still out. Way down the street. Fire engines and workers. Clearing away the wreckage still. Oh, we'll be so thankful when there are no more rocket bombs. That day, we were out to get the place they were launched from. Oh, that sounds frightful. <laughs> well, it wasn't exactly a routine hop. And did you get the place? You bet. On the button. But I took some heavy flak in my waist. And that's when I got mine. It was? Yeah. Hey... You know what those doodlebugs sound like? When they're coming down out of the sky, coming right at you and nobody's staring them? Like what? Like Paul Bunyan giving somebody the raspberry. <laughs> Paul Bunyan? And what's a raspberry? Well, he's about as big as a redwood tree. What? <laughs> of course, he's just legendary. Oh. He cuts the whole winter's supply of wood with one stroke of the axe. Oh. <laughs> but the raspberry, well, that's just some American slang. I see. So you're off ops on account of that day? Yeah. Fellas had to lift me out of the plane. It's the first time I didn't get out under my own power. But you look all right, darling. I mean, you don't look as though you were wounded or anything. Well, I feel swell, too. I really never felt so well before. Not ever. And now especially, having found you, now especially I want to keep you with me. Just like this. And keep walking. Always. Oh, I'd like to, but I can still catch a bit of shut eye before work if I hurry back to my room. <laughs> Work's got to be done, you know. The war's got to be won. Sure. But not by us. Why so? I mean, why not? We're all in it, you know. Look, I want to take you everywhere. Didn't you ever feel like that? Like you wanted to get up and wander? Where would you like to go? Oh, I'll take you. Just over rooftops. We could start right now and forget about the war and everything and just keep walking. Quincy. I'd sure like to show you Quincy. I'll bet ten bucks you never saw anything that remotely resembled the Mississippi River. We could have picnics in the brush over on the Missouri side and then just keep on going. Yellowstone Park, and geysers, painted rocks and things. I always did want to go there. Oh, it would be ever so wonderful, just like you say. If we could go off and wander everywhere. Buster, you'd really want to take me? 
You've known me such a little time. <laughs> Baby, I'm a good picker. <laughs> Ask the guys down at Brookwood. They'll tell you. Hey, move over. Here comes a policeman, and he's using the entire sidewalk. Buster, that Bobby, he... He walked right through you. How's about it, baby? Are you coming with me to Quincy and Yellowstone? Brookwood. Brookwood, a, a wide place. Grass and rhododendrons, and the train runs on the hillside above that valley. Where, where did you say you were stationed? Brookwood. It's down in Surrey. Yes, I know. Let go my arm. Let go my Darling, arm. Darling, don't be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. I mean that. Honestly. Brookwood... Brookwood, the cemetery. It's a military cemetery. I remember now. I was there once with Sylvia Williams. Her fiancé was killed in the RAF, and, and he's buried there. Joan, darling. That's why all those people didn't see it. The man we passed in the dressing gown, the one in the wrecked flat, he was dead, too. Now I remember about the Blue Polly. It went with most of Stokemore Place in May of 1941. Oh, you're frightened. All those people in it when the bomb came down. A different kind of bomb from tonight's and yesterday's. And that bomb in Wickham Road. I kept running and I ran and ran and I said it never touched me. And then I ran into the turning under the archway and, and you helped me after I fell. Sure, I helped you. I, I can't believe it. All those people, that policeman never saw you. He never saw me either. And I hear more people coming toward us and they don't see us. They never will see us. They'll walk right through us as though we were air. Joan... You're frightened, aren't you, hon? Yes. Yeah. Hold tight to me. You'll soon be... You won't be scared any longer. And then we'll start wandering off. Just anywhere in God's green world that you want to go. It doesn't matter. Anywhere. Feel better now? Yes. Oh, Buster, put your arms around me. Always, Joan. Always. You have heard McKinley Cantor's story, Forever Walking Free. Adapted for Author's Playhouse by Dorothy Cheney Quinnan and directed by Mr. Norman Felton. Miss Cheer Branson was heard as Joan and Mr. Arthur Seltzer as Buster Menton. Others in the cast of Author's Playhouse tonight included Mr. Haskell Coffin, Mr. William Bigley, Mr. Herbert Butterfield, and Mr. Bob Derenforth. The music was arranged and played by Mr. Elwin Owen. Next week, same time, same station, Author's Playhouse will bring you Wilbur Schramm's hilarious fantasy, Grandpa Hopewell and His Flying Tractor. <laughs> Arthur's Playhouse was heard in Canada through the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This is the National Broadcasting Company.